Right. Week two. And two. We're, we're still here. <laughs> um, great. Uh, so I, I think I think let's just, just, just have a look. Uh, neither of us have looked at what we're doing, really, for the week two, right? We have an no. idea that it's going to be something about coding, maybe, probably. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so let's open National Video and Museum and get started with Scratch. Yeah, get stuck into creating your own game and start exploring Scratch, a free game design software that's the perfect entry point for coding. Have you ever done any coding before, Samal? I have not at all so i'm that's... i'm too old like i think we were i think we did maybe like two lessons of coding at school and uh, they're I like didn't no, even have that. no one needs computers computers <laughs> are not the future <laughs> absolutely not Why someone else will do that work for you um <laughs> so yeah no i've done i've done absolutely nothing um and there's a video tutorial on their website um which uh we'll put a link to think so other people can watch it and then there's a pdf to download which i have downloaded um and it looks like a bit like the last one um that it's explaining all of the layout mm -hmm. uh, and where all the bits are and then giving you some instructions about how to go through it uh, i'm going to open the website on my desktop scratch Um, I'm going to sign in. I uh, know this one doesn't have a Google login, so we're going to have to create our own. Um, so, if you're in the United Kingdom. exciting watching everybody log in um fix it in post <laughs> we will not fix it in post oh so yes uh for those of you who are uh watching and interested uh so this week we obviously worked with piss school alex also learned how to use davinci resolve for video editing and is working on obs which is for uh streaming video as well so um it has been quite an educational week and by educational i mean late nights of staring at software going how does this work oh this must be uh, uh, this, this seems so easy to use why is it taking so long because you are trying to be a perfectionist in a thing you've only just learned how to use uh, all right oh. okay what have we got, have we got? Nice. Okay, I'm logged in. Uh, immediately, I'm seeing that there's a learn how to make a project, which looks kind of cool. Um, then there's a there's some starter projects, and then you can connect with other people. Um, there's some pretty cool stuff on here. Uh, yeah, where should I start? I'm just going to start by going into the create section and opening it up and seeing what it looks like. Yeah. Oh so. dear. <laughs> this is where I lose myself. It's just oh, look at all the things I can do. Yeah, this is where that problem of being like, ah, oh, I have ex I know exactly how I want this to look <laughs> meets yep. the hard rock of reality of how do I do that? It's doable. I just will have to work really hard. Um, but it doesn't look. It does. I mean, it doesn't look super complicated, from what I can see. Um, but who knows? I mean, there's lots of different things. So, left hand side, that's all the code blocks. Um, so those are all the things that the thing, the sprites, can do. Uh, and it looks like they're broken down into motion, uh, looks, 
which um, includes things like um, having speech bubbles pop up or changing costumes, um, sound cues, uh, events. So when the person that interacts, what the controller reacts with it. Uh, control, um, which is which is kind of logic commands. So if then um, delays, repeats, that kind of stuff. Uh, sensing, so interacting with other things in the space, um, whether that's talking or physically touching them. Um, some simple mathematical operators like plus, minus, greater than, less than, things like that. Um, and then some variables, which I guess is just random chance modifiers. Uh, and then it looks like you can then, once you understand what all of that does and what that means, you can also make some extra ones yourselves. Um, now, there's also, I'm looking at the top three tabs, you've got code, costumes and sounds. Costumes allows you, it seems, to make changes to the sprite. So the sprites are what we made last week. Um, yeah. But now we are able to, uh, certainly in this one, select elements of it and make changes to that so that we can change a costume. And then there's a sounds one as well, um, which allows us to edit sound waves, although they've made them look like fun, exciting little kind of bubbles rather than sound waves. Nice. Um, so that's all the stuff over on there. Then in the middle is the area, the coding area, which presumably is sort of our foreground and background. Got our sprites, our pixel sprites that can go in down there. At the moment, we've just got uh, Scratchy the cat. Um, and then we can see in the top right hand corner preview and we can change our backgrounds. Now we don't, I don't know about you, Smell, I've not done anything with backdrops yet. Not yet. I've just created like assets of the world. Yeah. Um, me too. Um, and the world I've made is slightly complicated but hey that's fine it's fine i'm sure it'll work um so the suggestion in this pdf to learn how to play make work with scratch is that we recreate a classic arcade game and the classic arcade game being pong um from 1972. Um, amazing. Okay. Ah, uh, cool. So there's also, it seems, there is an, uh, a library um, available of sprites so we don't have to create we don't have to do any work in piscal if we if we didn't want to we already have which is great mm -hmm. um but there's loads of other images um not quite as uh eight bit as our stuff um a bit more smoothed out and some stuff looking really realistic and some stuff looking really uh, cartoony some of it static some of it animated um, but loads of other things to look at. Um, that's cool. Yeah, these PDFs are really, really well designed. They just mm -hmm. take you through it nice and slowly. Um, Oh, this is exciting to watch, isn't it? It's just two watching yeah, two just... people just 
scare, stare at a screen and go, what is this? Ah. Um, Especially when you can't see the screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will be able to see the screen because yeah, as, with la as with last week, what I will do is I will go back in and um, add some video so that people can see that. Um, so we can see what we're looking at. So how many steps are there? There are step one. Well, step one is just like looking at the screen. That's cool. Then there's, we can add some new sprites. Then basically just want us to get the ball added. Then we're going to add some coding to that ball so that it bounces. Um, and then it's all about adding inputs, which looks like it's the most time consuming or the most complicated bit of it which is then like how does your player control the paddle um but it can't it doesn't look super super difficult um but there's like nine or ten steps oh no 12 steps to that one uh and then we're duplicating the sprite which is really quick uh, and then we're just finally adding in so that it understands that when the ball and the paddle touch, something else should happen. Um, and then we add a background in, and then it's done. Gosh, um, I almost feel like I could have. We could have done this in half an hour, but I'm glad it's we didn't because it would have been a lot of <laughs> would have been a lot of people video watching us going like. Yeah, it'll be more like at some point this. I've been like, I <laughs> don't, can't, can't cope. Um, I, I don't know. I think for pin, I think for making pong, that we that would be pretty quick. I'm mm. really excited to think about then what this means also for the game that we, games that we are trying to design for ourselves. I'm gonna do both. I'm gonna find some time. I'm gonna make pong like they suggested, and I will probably record myself making pong. Uh, and following through the PDF so that people can see how quick and easy it is to follow this these instructions. Mm -hmm. um, but then I'm going to have a play around with some other stuff and work out what all of these other commands and codes do or can do or can make happen. Yeah. Um, which I think is probably good because I've still got lots of... I've got some more work to do in Pisco at this point. Um, and uh, so there's more sprites to make. And I might even try and make a background. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if... Maybe, maybe next week? <laughs> yeah, maybe next week. I was just wondering if there was a uh, something in the on the learner home section of National Video Game Museum which was about making backgrounds, but there isn't. I've just double checked. Something we can do. Well, I mean, if I think about classic eight or sixteen bit games, they usually the use backgrounds like are. Fairly static, aren't they? Yeah. They're usually. This is just an image there. There might be some so, like some like panning or something, but. Yeah, yeah. I think that there's a bit of. There's definitely some panning in some of the eight-bit stuff, or there's mm -hmm. no background at all. I'm thinking of like. Some of the really early stuff, like around. Pong and in 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 the seventies and some of the Atar Atari stuff, where it's just like you are a blue coloured pixel moving through a landscape of black pixels and white pixels or, um, like that kind of stuff. But then when you get into more slightly more complicated stuff, even the games that I remember from my childhood of like early Super Mario, Sonic the Hedgehog, um, Street Fighter, those kinds of ones. There's not a huge amount of action happening in the background, yeah. if any. Um, so maybe like some clouds moving across, 
Um, I think the Street Fighter ones have like some really basic like. <laughs> yeah, people in the back. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of, of Sonic, but I think it's especially, particularly, like definitely in the first kind of world. I can't remember the name of. Is just kind of clouds and maybe a bit of greenery. Um, and that kind of forced perspective yeah. Disney thing of like the background moves slower than the foreground, but yeah, it still does yeah, move. Yeah. So there's obviously some there's a little bit of 3D rendering in there, but but not too much. Mm -hmm. um, oh boy, this is gonna be this is gonna be fun. It is, uh, and as I've decided to make that perspective racer now i'm going to do like everything getting slightly bigger and moving forwards so that'll be fun mm -hmm. <laughs> i'll need to figure out yeah i'll need to figure out like because i think i'm gonna have to create whole like platforms if i'm doing a side scroller like i need to create yeah platforms That's... ladders all of that kind of stuff but it looks like there's quite a lot of of things, at least in Pisco, uh, in Scratch, that we can draw upon. Um, although I haven't seen any ladders yet. Uh, Design a ladder. Yeah. Um, so if in doubt, I can always supplement. Uh, you know supplement what i want to put in there with something else to start with yeah um <laughs> there's a really nice cool little sprite uh which is a ghost the ghost just goes like Whoa! and then runs away uh, <laughs> so uh, that will appear in my game <laughs> you've got you've got convertibles and cars here so you, you could just you know if you wanted yeah, but they're, side, they're side on, you see. They're side they are, on. Yeah, they are. And what I'm doing is either front back or top down. So it's just, just going to have to do it. Whereas there's a top down cat, which is kind of cool. So I might use that to start with. Everything's just cats. That that <laughs> might just become your game after a <laughs> while. <laughs> I do cars. I'm just going to do cats now. Cyber, cyber cats. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Awesome. So, next step. Um, what's uh, what's your plan? Are you gonna are you gonna also follow the instructions? I'm gonna I'm gonna create Pong so I get familiar with some of the instructions mostly, and then I will probably probably watch the video that they have on Scratch as well because that might be useful, and then I'll watch a couple of playthroughs of some some side scroller game and to see kind of like get some inspiration basically i think i've decided that i want to do a side scroller and i can pretty much set on that cool. so i'll probably watch oh i could i could watch a playthrough of that kind of horrible i think it's atari star wars game with luke skywalker i can't remember um <laughs> <laughs> can watch a playthrough of that uh, and then decide that is not what I want to do <laughs> do something else um, so yeah so I, I'll definitely make Pong I'll probably record it um, just to have the process through and then and then maybe maybe we'll post it we'll post both of them together brilliant uh, and if anyone is watching along with this they want to know more about what we are trying to do um so I realize we haven't we haven't explained what our plan is or, or why we're doing it, um, but uh, so there's the National Video Game Museum's website, uh, and on that they've got this thing for learning, learn at home, um, where we're picking up all of these assets. Uh, they've also embedded some of their videos from YouTube, um, but if uh, you just want to go straight there, if you go to the National Video Game Museum on YouTube. Um, you can see all of the videos that are on their website uh, where um, Leah 
is going through um, in a lot more detail than what we are um, and explaining how it all works and basically you can kind of watch along and learn how uh, to do it by watching someone doing it. Um, they also have listed on their their pixel heads live stream and that is particularly and specifically for young people um so it's like a community for young people to learn about and talk and create video games um they were you know they were hoping it was going to be a live thing at the museum uh, in sheffield but obviously pandemic so it's all online at the moment um and they did some great stuff over the summer last year uh, with some young people as well and like the virtual clubs are all up there as well so if you want to see how other young people are um, enjoying and playing with what they're doing then um, you should jump onto that and um, find out more uh, otherwise Samara and I continue our plan to uh, to work through all of these worksheets and create something at the end of it that's playable yeah. Um, or something that we can, you know, carry on and present at some point. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm thinking even if it's really, really bad, I'm going to share the whole mm. final piece at the end of absolutely. Sort of early March now, won't it? Um, as we get ready for more of our gameplay related content to be announced. Um, but otherwise, hey, go now if you're interested jump on follow the link below and go and get started with scratch uh,